Hello everyone and welcome back and thanking my Heavenly Father through our Saviour Jesus Christ I've been given a, once again another opportunity for this week's second week video to talk about the characters of the Bible and today we're going to start off with another faithful, faithful sorry, patriarch recorded in Hebrews 11th chapter and his name is Enoch. And today we're going to understand about what Enoch had done and his faithful actions that he had done to be noticed and mentioned in Hebrews 11th chapter. So we're going to understand about who Enoch was and help us understand more of the characters of the Bible and also help our own lives itself. So if we want to understand Enoch as a character, we first need a particular structure like we did with Abel. So if we want to know a structure that we could follow to help us understand Enoch is that who Enoch was, what Enoch had done, how God saw Enoch's work, and eventually we can see at the end how this helps our lives and how we can take on Enoch's actions in ourselves, in, in our own lives, I should say. So, let's start. We're talking about the verse itself which mentions about Enoch in Hebrews 11th chapter. So we're going to read Hebrews 11th chapter, 5th to 6th verse. So let's read that right now. As it mentions, by faith. Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists to exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So we see in this verse that there are two main parts we have to understand. The sixth verse saying, ultimately, that Enoch showed faith. And because he showed faith, God commended him and pleased him for his righteous and faithful actions. And the sixth verse itself justifies Enoch must have shown faith, for it is impossible for one to please God and show faith and be obedient and not please God. And without showing faith, it is impossible to deliver these actions, for God provides rewards sorry, to those who earnestly seek him and want more from God and stay in his way and go forward and forward to in God's righteous path, we see. And we see Enoch must have delivered on this forefront, otherwise he would not be mentioned as one who was commended by God and pleased God. So, now we need to understand now the fifth verse, which is a bit more different to what we understood about the sixth verse, as it talks about more about Enoch as a character. We understand. So as a character, we know who Enoch is. We don't really know that much. So first, let's understand about this verse here. And then we're going to look at about Enoch's character in general and how he has a family lineage. So first, we see in the fifth verse that it records that Enoch, in his lifetime, his body was never found and he did not have a normal death process. But what does this mean if he did not have a normal death process? We need to understand that in this situation, we could think that Enoch could have ascended to heaven in this situation, for his body was not found and he did not have a normal death process. So his his outcome is, a, is of course, sorry, a mystery to us still. So another point that we need to understand is that no one has ever ascended to heaven apart from Jesus Christ after his death of the ransom sacrifice that he gave to gain us the eternal life as we know jesus christ resurrected from death and through that ransom sacrifice we're going to gain eternal life and from this is only where jesus christ went to heaven and no one else has ever went to heaven so enoch is still a mystery of his outcome in his final stages as we see god had himself had taken enoch from his life course once he has done his job so we see now about Enoch's lineage. So who was Enoch in general? So now answering the first point, who is Enoch? We've understood now what God thought of Enoch. God commended him and was pleased by his action. But now we have to see who Enoch was. It's recorded in Genesis 5th chapter that Enoch's father named Jared was 600 no, sorry, 962 years old. It's the second oldest human to live in history. And then we see his son, Enoch's son, Methuselah, was 969 years old, the longest living human in 
history. So Enoch's family's lineage is seen to be a long living family lineage. As we see, this family is long lived. But when it comes to Enoch's um, outcome, it's still a mystery as we don't know anything about it, as you can see. But now, though, we need to understand more about Enoch as a character and what he had really done to be mentioned in this chapter. For Enoch must have shown some sort of actions or faith that he has delivered in order to be mentioned in the faithful patriarchs chapter in Hebrews chapter in Hebrews book. So we understand as a correlation point towards each character in the Hebrews 11th chapter that each character in this chapter mentioned had died but still live in the faith. As we understand, Enoch, of course, had a mysterious death, as we don't know what happened to him, and Abel had also died. This point is not really relevant to what we're learning about what Enoch had done, but it is a correlation point to help us understand the, the, the similarities, we could say, between each character in the chapter. So now, though, we're going to see what Enoch had done. So we understand Enoch was a person who lived in the period of the first world one of the wor worst worlds you could say after all we understand that this was the world that was the first world that was flooded the period of noam that many people know about as we see this is the world where there was full of evil at an all-time high consequence of sin was at an all-time high everyone was against god's words and there was a little knowledge to understanding what what god was trying to say but there was one man in this period of time who lived by faith and walked alongside by faith, God, by God, sorry. And he lived by God's faith, we should say. And that man was Enoch, who lived for 365 years, we see here. He was taken from God after his course was done, we see. And we see in this important thing is that Enoch lived almost triple less, we could see, than his son and his father. But of course, there must be a reason for this. But we need to understand about what Enoch had done in these 360 years, we should say, or 65. We understand Enoch in this period was preaching to the people. He was talking about God and he was showing the obedience to God, even though he was in an unfavorable situation, as everyone around him was against him and was against God's wills and wishes. And of course, Enoch obviously was in an unfavorable situation and the environment around him could easily influence him and take him down. But despite this, Enoch stayed strong with God's blessing to, to stand up up to this situation and carries on the preaching that we see that in his righteous way and because of this we see he was commended by God commended being praised by God for his actions so you understand that it's recorded in Jude book at, but about one of his preachings that he talks about which is more of a prophecy we could say so we see in Jude chapter, the Jude chapter, the 14th verse and 15th verse, it says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands, sands, thousands sorry, of his holy ones, to judge everyone and to con convict all of them, all the ungodly acts they have committed, their ungodly, ungodliness, sorry, and all of their defiant words, ungodly sinners, have spoken against him. So we understand in this 14th verse that in this period he was talking about Jesus Christ, repentance and baptism. But in this specific verse we see overall he's talking about God's holy ones shall come down and give the judgment to these people for their actions and convict them for their actions he's saying in these two verses. He's saying that God's angels will give, God's holy ones, sorry, will come and give the judgment needed. So we see Enoch in this period was prophesying and he was preaching about God, Jesus Christ, repentance and baptism, even though his unfavorable situation situation sorry could easily have pulled him down especially in a period where saturn's um reign not reign we should say influence was very high in that period he still stood strong and this character of enoch still standing strong preaching about god telling the truth 
of and staying faithful to God is in the midst of evil people is a very big inspiration for our own character to develop this in situation when we're in a situation like this when we get the chance to preach to others or talk about God as the situation around us is always going to be negative as the people who do not believe God and but unless we show the resistance and almost pry through this situation we will not gain anything from this as we will be the ones that are pushed down and unless we go up and preach like Enoch had done in the first world, we are going to be the ones blessed for our beautiful actions. For this is why Enoch was protected once again. Because once you do it, you'll be keep on getting saved and saved. Because God knows you are a true God's child. And because of this, Enoch carried on his faithful acts and he glorified God's name without blaming the situation around him. And once the time came, his course had ended, of course. And finally, we see Enoch as a character was commended by God and blessed by God as a character who did well for showing his faith, obedience, resistance towards the situation around him and the environment. And because of this, he's mentioned in the Faithful Patriarchs chapter. And that is why he's a beautiful character once again for us to use his characters and his actions in our day-to-day -day li -day lives to help us to stay strong. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next week's video. Bye.